welcome to Stella's Meza. On today's episode, we're going to do a little trip. No passport required. We're going to do Morocco meets Kenya. And today we're going to cook some Kenyan chicken curry. And then we're also going to cook some couscous and some tefeya. Now, tefeya is an onion dish cooked in Morocco with spices, onions, and it has um, raisins in it. And then we're going to cook couscous, which is a type of North African semolina. For those of you who have never seen it, this is what it looks like. It's just um, roughly cracked durum wheat, and this is whole wheat semolina. And then we're also gonna cook some cabbage from Kenya, and this is how we do it in my home in Kenya. So over here, I have um, a couple onions, like four, five onions that have been finely uh, chopped, and they've been cooking. You want them to turn golden brown. Now for the full description and for the measurements, I'm going to put that in my blog. You can go visit that site. It's www.stellasmeza.blogspot.com and it's going to be at the bottom of the video, the video or the uh, description box. So we're just going to keep start right away because I've been uh, cooking these onions on medium heat and I see that they're starting to turn color, which means it's time to start cooking. So over here with the four onions that I have finally um, chopped, you see the sun turn brown, I'm going to add some turmeric in there, okay, and then you're going to stir it. Now turmeric has a strong smell, not a bad smell, just a little bit strong, and I'm used to it, but for those who are not, you want to put it in first so that that smell can cook down a little. I'm going to turn the heat up. I turned it down because I didn't want my onions to burn. And then we're going to keep stirring. And over here we have the onions, that's for the tefeya. And then over here we have the onions, that's for the chicken. So I have here one onion that's finely diced. And then I have um, ginger garlic paste, a teaspoon of that in here. And then once the onions start turning nice and golden brown, we're going to add the tomatoes. I bought a crushed, a can of crushed um, peeled tomatoes because I don't like the peels floating up top after I finish cooking it. And then we're going to add the spices. We're going to put the chicken in and we're going to let it cook. Simmer on medium heat. But we'll get to that. And then over here we also have one onion that's finely diced that's cooking. This is for the cabbage. And you do not want this to burn. Okay? You want to keep turning. We're gonna, we have one head of cabbage that I have uh, already finely sliced or cut. And then I have three medium carrots that I went ahead and shredded. Uh, I grated, um, like rough grated it. And then I also have um, half a green pepper, half a red pepper that I went ahead and finely cut and I'm, I put it in there and kind of just toss it all together, okay? And you'll see the pictures, step-by-step -step instructions and pictures on my blog site. So, over here we've already let the um, turmeric cook down a little. And then I'm going to add the cinnamon. I'm going to add the ginger. I'm going to add the black pepper and the salt. Now we have we're going to add sugar and some um, raisins towards the end once these have cooked down and caramelized. So after we mix this up we're going to cover it and let it cook down for 45 minutes. You want to use a nonstick pan and if for some reason your pan has a, a onion sticking towards the bottom just add a little bit of water like um, put a cup of water so that it doesn't stick and then cover it and let it simmer on medium heat for 45 minutes and then we'll come back and check on it. We're going to add the sugar and the raisins at that point in time. Now I have golden raisin that I use. You can use any kind of raisin but I prefer golden raisin because they're a little bit sweeter. And then I am going to um, put them in some hot water and this that's them right there. I'm going to put them in some hot water to plump them up and then we're going to throw them in here after 45 minutes. So we're just going to cover this up and let it cook. All right, now we're going to start on our chicken. I'm going to turn this in. Remember, the tefeya on. Let's do medium low so that way it doesn't burn. But we'll come keep checking on it. Over here, I'm going to turn this up a little bit. Uh, the onions. It's a one onion and one teaspoon of ginger garlic paste. And for those of you who have never seen ginger garlic paste, this is what it looks like. They sell it in the uh, grocery store. If you go to the international aisle in the section where there's an Indian food, if you don't find that there, any Indian grocery store will carry this. Or you can make it by yourself. You can cut one inch of um, ginger root, fresh ginger root, peel it with a spoon, like a teaspoon. It's easiest to peel it if it's cold. So if you put it in the freezer and then let it stay for an hour or so and then use a spoon to peel it and then kind of slice it thin, dice it good. You can use a modern pestle to make a paste out of it or you can use, uh, and then you can mix that with um, either 
minced garlic that you find in the produce section of the grocery store or you can to uh, take two cloves of garlic, peel them, mash them, and then make a paste out of them and combine that together. So it's equal parts, equal parts ginger, equal parts um, uh, garlic, okay? So if you look in here, that's the color you want for your onions for the chicken. They're finely diced, a nice golden color. So I'm going to add, on the crushed um, tomatoes, I'm going to ha add half the can, okay? So I'm just going to pour it in here, and it's going to make a big splash, so be careful. And that is why I am wearing an apron, because I like to eat my food, not wear it. Give it a nice stir. Now the rest of this we're going to preserve for the cabbages. So today we're making a whole meal. Okay. And a little messy. Okay. So we're going to start adding the spices. Now, I like to add my, um, what do you call it? My spices one at a time and stir as I go. And that there is curry powder gonna stir it and also check over here on the onions. I'm gonna turn this up a little to medium. And that's for the um, cabbage. Okay, Just give it a stir and let it cook. You want it to look as golden brown as the onions for the chicken look. All right. Now if you like to use whole tomatoes like vine tomatoes you can cut them up fine. If I do that when I don't have canned tomatoes I blanch them. That means you put them in hot water and then let it sit there for a little bit and then Throw it in a, a bowl full of ice water just to shock them and stop them from cooking. And then peel them and cut them. Same thing as a peeled crushed tomato. Okay. Alright, now to that I'm going to add um, some garam masala. You stir each time you put something in. You stir. Some cinnamon. Give it a nice stir, some coriander, nice stir, and some cumin, man, it smells so good already. Okay, I'm going to add some cumin. Now, if you do not like spicy food, you do not have to add anything, but I like mine with a little bit of kick, not too much. I'm a coward when it comes to that. I like to taste it, but I don't like it to, to kick my... You know what? <laughs> so over here I have, uh, you can use green pepper, green chili pepper that's been cut up fine. But I but I like the taste of, hab um, what do you call, habanero pepper. Actually this is not habanero pepper. Chipotle pepper, that's it. And then I, I take the seeds out. You, by can, you find this in the international section, the Mexican, where they have the Hispanic foods. You chop that up fine and you put it in your food. It's already roasted, so it has that nice deep flavor to it. And you take the seeds out, it won't be too spicy. If you want to leave it in there and make it hot, it's all what you can handle. Okay, I'm going to put that there. So I'm going to let that simmer for a little bit. And then we'll come back and add the chicken. Okay, I'm just going to cover it up and let it simmer for a little bit. Okay, and we have a lot of utensils today. I'm sure it's cool in there. I'm going to walk over here and check on our onions and they're looking nice. Now remember you do not want your onions to turn black because it's going to show through the cabbage, okay? Then I'm going to walk over here and show you what the cabbage looks like. So remember this is one head of cabbage that I went ahead and thinly cut and then I have the red um, pepper, the green pepper, I have half a bunch of cilantro that I went ahead and finely chopped and then uh, mix them all up together. So. I know it looks like a lot, but it's going to wilt down as you cook it. You don't need to add water to this dish because there's moisture in the cabbage. It's going to cook down with its own moisture. We're going to put it in there after we put the spices and the tomatoes, and then we're going to cover it and let it cook down. Okay? So we're going to come over here, and I think, I think I'll, uh, yeah, that's good. We can add our uh, chicken in there now. I have just a mix of chicken, um, wings and little domettes. You can use any piece of chicken that you like. You know what? I'm just going to push it in there. I want that water from them. Okay. 
some oil in there. It smells so good. Can you only imagine what it's going to smell like when it's done cooking. I'm going to lock this dog in there and then I'm going to give it a stir. Just to make sure the chickens are nice and coated. Now be careful because at this point it could splatter on you so I'm going to do that gently. Alright. Checking also on the onions here. What I'm going to do now is add the other half of the tomatoes in here. From the canned tomatoes. Gonna give it a good stir. And then as that cooks, we're gonna check on our chicken here. Now you notice I haven't put salt already to the chicken. I like to wait till the last, what, 10 minutes of cooking? Because sometimes some of these spices are salty. Oh, the peppers you add in there, they add salt. So you don't wanna like just assume that it's not, there's not enough salt. So you let it cook down and then at that point you'll check and see if it's um, salty enough. If not, add some. If it is, leave it the way it is. That's, that's fair here. It's coming along very well. And I'm gonna add a little bit of water in here just to avoid burning. I know the kitchen's busy today, isn't it? And then I'm gonna turn that heat down some. I like that. Smells so good. And then we're gonna cover her back up. Multitasking Stella is today. Ah. Okay, our chicken looks good. We're gonna add a little bit of water to that. And then we're gonna cover her up. By a little bit, I mean like a quarter cup. If you like a lot of, we call it soup in Kingdom. If you like a lot of stew in your chicken, you can add a lot, but chances are if you do that, the stew is gonna be watery. So. In case you put too much water and your uh, sauce is running, just take one tablespoon of cornstarch, in Kenya we call it corn flour, mix it with a teaspoon of water, make sure you uh, whisk it real good so there's no lumps in there, and then just gently, slowly pour it into your chicken as you churn it. That way you'll have a nice, thick sauce, okay? All right, so now we're gonna start adding the spices to cabbage. Now there's not too many cab uh, spices that go into the cabbage, so it's just, um, curry powder and I put some red chili powder in there if you look at that I'm just gonna put that right in there and then some turmeric okay and then we're gonna give it a nice Ooh, see what I mean that's why I need that apron all right a nice sauce let the flavors get to know each other let it cook down now we're gonna cook our couscous last because it takes between eight and 10 minutes to cook, so we're gonna cook that last. And in there, just to give it a little bit of flavor, I'm gonna grate some um, onion, uh, some <laughs> some orange rind in there, okay? Now, when you're grating, I use um, a zester, or a fine plain zester. Now, make sure that when you're zesting, you just get the orange part, not the white part, because that white part makes your food bitter. You don't want that, you just want the orange part. Just to go around and get the orange part off. And then we're gonna add, um, to this tefea, at the very end, when we add the raisins, we're going to add a few drops of uh, orange blossom water. If you ever wonder what this looks like, you can find this online. Amazon has them, and it gives a nice flavor to the to your food, whatever it is. Now, the reason why I use the zest instead of the orange juice, I find that the zest has more of that orangey flavor because of the essential oils on the peel that I prefer to the actual orange juice. So we're going to keep turning this. I forgot to cover my chicken. Come take a look in here. Look at that. See that? We're gonna cover her up. Uh, cover her up, and then we're gonna finish with our cabbage. All right now, the chicken we're gonna let simmer, and we're gonna keep coming to check and like churn the chicken pieces in there. We're gonna let it simmer for like 30, 35 minutes to wait. Make sure the chicken's cooked all the way through on uh, medium low. Okay, so you see that? Not quite medium, but a little bit on the lower side. And the tefea, you see it's on between medium and low, and this one seems like it's gonna cook 
faster than the rest. I'm just going to keep an eye on it. I'm going to have to turn that down in there. All right, now we're ready to put our cabbage into this mix. Oh, green hands. Just going to take a little at a time. No water needed for this. Trust me, it's not going to stick because cabbage has a lot of water in it. And if you want, you can have the recipe depending on how many people you're feeding. So we're going to keep doing this and then we're going to give it a nice toss. Make sure all the cabbage and all the vegetables in here are nicely coated. And then we're going to cover it, leave it on medium, medium low for 15 minutes. But you want it check and make sure that your cabbage is not, you don't want it too wilted, you want a little bit of a crunch in the al dente and that makes it nice and delicious. You can still taste that you're eating cabbage. See all the colors in there, the orange from the um, carrots, you can see the little green, the dark green specks from the cilantro. We also call that coriander in, um, in Kenya and you see the red pepper and the green pepper. So this is going to make for a full flavorful dish and as, you, as you always, I'm going to add the salt in last just to make sure it's not too salty, okay? So we'll take a break and we'll be right back and show you how it's looking. All right, see you soon. Welcome back. Right before the break, we were cooking our chicken curry, which is simmering away on medium heat over here. And it's, go it's going well if you want to take a peek in there. See it? And it's been cooking now. It's like 15 minutes. We're going to let that cook down, the uh, sauce cook down for 30 minutes total. And then we also had our tifaya that we have going here. That's the onions and the um, spices. And it's almost to the point where we put our sugar and our raisins and our orange blossom water. And then over here, we got um, one tablespoon of cooking oil to which I heated up. And then for a minute, we've had uh, one cup of couscous in here. And now uh, we some of some that oil. So I'm gonna take the next step and pour the water, okay? This is two cups of hot water. Add that into the pot, and then I'm going to give it a stir, and then to that I'm going to add about a quarter teaspoon of um, salt. I use kosher salt to cook. Okay, and then we're going to give it a stir. Okay, and then I am going to zest the orange now. I want to show you how I do. I've already cleaned the orange, so you just want to get kind of roll it back and forth. You don't want to get down to where it's really white, so you move the orange around, you turn it around as you do this, just to give it a little bit of flavor, extra flavor. You can add the zest of the whole orange, or you can do half the zest of half the orange. And remember, this orange is still good. You can use it. You can eat it after you're done zesting it. See that? I'm not getting like too deep down in there just for that extra flavor and I think that should do it for this and I'm just gonna scrape that into the bowl into the uh, pot and I'm gonna give it a stir and then I'm gonna add a little pinch of saffron now this is my take on couscous okay so don't quote me don't say my grandma doesn't cook it like that I'm sure grandma is a really nice lady but this is Stella's Meza. <laughs> so we're going to do it my way this time, okay? All right. Oh, you need a little bit of saffron. All right, I'm going to give it a little stir, and then I'm going to cover and let it cook for eight minutes. Now, when it's when the water's almost done, <laughs> I'll cover. when the water's almost done, I'm going to take some of this. This is a ghee, which is just purified butter. I'm going to take a teaspoon of it. I'm going to put it into the couscous and fluff it up a little just for that added extra flavor. Okay. So over here, you want to take a look and see what the cabbage looks like. And we're almost done. You see, it's not wilted. And I realize I told you to cover the pot. Do not cover the pot because the steam from the cabbage is going to drop down into the, your pot and make your cabbage soggy. So you cook it uncovered the whole time. See on medium heat. All right. I'm going to let that rest and then I'm going to finish cooking the tefaya. So it's been simmering on medium heat, medium low for 45 minutes. I'm going to add the raisins in there. It smells so good. I soak the raisins in hot water just to plump them up some. I'm going to add that in there. Give it a stir. That's a quarter cup of um, golden raisins. But you're going to see the, the, uh, 
measurements and everything I use, I'm going to put that on my blog. So make sure you visit www.stellasmeza.blogspot.com. All right, now to that, we're going to add a little bit of um, orange blossom water. Now this is kind of strong, so you don't want to put too much. It smells so good. If you put too much, it's going to end up smelling soapy. So you just want a little bit, a couple drops, like a quarter teaspoon. And I'm going to give it a nice... Oh, it smells so good. All right, we're going to cover this and let it finish cooking. We'll give it another 20 minutes. So we cooked it for 45 minutes. We're going to give it an extra 20 minutes. And then what we're going to do when we serve this up, we're going to... Um, I'm going to use a tahini. That's a, a Moroccan traditional cooking or serving dish. I'm going to put the bed of couscous at the bottom, and then I'm going to put um, the cabbage along the sides, and I'm going to lay the chicken on there, and then we're going to top it off with its fare. So come back and watch me uh, show you what the finished product looks like, okay? Don't go anywhere. Don't be too long. Welcome back. Right before the break, we were cooking our chicken curry, Canaan style, and we also cooked some couscous, which is whole wheat couscous, with some citrus zest in it, and then we made some cabbage, Canaan style, and tefer. Tefer is like a, a garnish, a Moroccan garnish with um, onions and raisins and a little bit of um, orange blossom water and some sugar. By the way, before the break, I was making the tefer, and I forgot to mention, add in there two tablespoons of granulated sugar, just regular sugar. But I'll include all this information in my blog, and it is www.stellasmeza.blogspot.com. So make sure to visit the Z's videos. I have the instructions for how to cook everything on the videos you see, plus there's other um, recipes for like things I do not do on video. So there's a lot of stuff in there, including stories of where I'm from, where I grew up, and all those things associated with the dishes that I cook and the people who inspired me to cook them. So make sure you visit. All right, so I went ahead and served this up. And I'd be lying if I tell you I'm not drooling because, yes, I am. If you look in there, you see the tefer. You see that? That's the onions. And you can look in here and see the raisins. And you see it's all nice and brown and caramelized. And then we have the chicken, which is just fall off the bone tender. It's so good. And then here you have the couscous, and I put some of that chicken sauce over it. And then we have the cabbage. And without further ado, I'm just going to dig in, guys. I am hungry, and it smells good, and I cannot wait to try it. Now, I went ahead and fluffed my couscous with some um, ghee, which is clarified butter, just to give it that nutty flavor. And let's see what we have. I wish I could feed you. I just, I just want to come closer so you can see what I'm working with here. That's a mint. I'm not going to eat it. That's just for garnish. Actually, let me just pull it out. Put on my mat here. Mm, 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 mm. Guys, those onions. Oh, my God. Look at that. Say, ah. Ah. Uh -huh. I'll help you. Um... Mm. Mm, mm, mm. So good. You can taste the cinnamon in there. And I'm gonna look at that. So tender, it just falls right off the bone. I'm gonna take a bite of that as well. Mm -hmm. Mm. Oh, almost melts in your mouth. Wanna bite? All right, that's enough of that. But um, make sure you try these dishes. See, you, can, you don't have to, because a lot of people get stuck on a certain way of doing things. It's good to explore, because you never know what you'll get. Who would have thought a Kenyan dish and a Moroccan dish could go this well together? So always try new stuff. If you want to put a twist on this recipe, go ahead and do that. Like the orange zest, that was my thing. And the saffron, I don't know if that's how they cook it, but I put a twist in there, and it's excellent. So don't... Restrict yourself. Think and eat outside the box. So join me next time as I take your taste buds on another culinary safari and I'm going to sit down with my family and we're going to dig it. Now, that is a um, Moroccan uh, serving dish. See, I served the rest of the chicken in there. It's called a tahini. Okay? So, 
come back. You never know where we're going to go next time. We'll see, okay? And thank you guys for joining me, and I wish you well.